Okay, so we need to go over to here, which is the vcbox.org, and then if you do slash server slash index HTML, then just download vcbox server. And um, we've just burnt an image to DVD. Don't worry, you can put it on a CD or DVD on uh, Nero. When it says it needs a CD for the image, swapped it to DVD and it burned DVDs. Why did I burn the image onto a DVD? Because I don't have any CDs here. Um, like I said, somebody's been bugging me this weekend to do this tutorial, so I'm going to do it. As you can see, this is on a laptop because this will basically be used as a demo system. Um, personally, if you're doing a server, you ideally want something a bit more substantial than this. Um, laptops are okay, but they're not really built for this sort of usage. You will find that over a period of time they'll get a bit warm, but also they lack the processing power when you're dealing with large amounts of um, data manipulation. So it's now being burnt on the DVD. I've got Windows, I think it's this Windows 7. This is that horrible Windows 10 on here. I don't like Windows 10. It's got too much junk on it. Um, it's got Windows 10 on it. I basically created a 100 gig partition on the drive um, just for doing VisiBox so I can create a Linux boot up. So now we're going to go to installing VisiBox as we've got our DVD ready to install. I just need to reboot and swap over from the current um, partition, which is my Windows one, and swap it over to the one we're now creating for Linux. Okay, so basically what I got is the PC to basically boot from my... Oh, hang on, I want to... VisiBox 7... Uh, basically boot off the CD DVD and it's now doing a install and off it goes it won't take long to do this so what am I doing on the laptop well basically I have no spare systems available um, I'm in Spain most of my PCs are in the Philippines and the one I have here, I do not want to be messing around trying to install uh, stuff that on here uh, on that one uh, because I can't do videos with it. So the thing with the server side, once it's on here, I then transfer all the way over here to. Once I've installed it on here, basically I then transfer it over to my main machine because I then access this through a command line in a PuTTY window. PuTTY is basically just like a uh, bit of command line software uh, where I connect to the IP on here. So I'm basically, I'm, see I'm trying to keep it as simple speak and such. Um, it will access this through the other computer so I'll be talking to this PC via the other PC because I have recording software on the other PC so I can show you how everything works um, in a much easier way than what we have currently which is basically I'm dangling my um, camera phone over the, the front of the laptop to say oh look we're installing so We'll just get through this install anyway. I'm just sort of yabbering on at the minute because it's busy doing the install. So here we are. It's language. You can change the language up here. Uh, this is awkward with one hand. You can tab around the screen. You know, you press the key tab and it'll move you around. So language is okay for US for me, even though I'm not American. And we do want to agree. So we press enter. And press tab again help back abort or next so you can press n or just tab it down and it's off installing again it's saying it's not ready basically 
the Etho is basically your network connection. Um, I think it might be struggling to find the router because the router on this system is password protected and it wouldn't have the password to connect this PC to my router so that this can go through the internet to get updates and stuff. So I need to manually do that. There's an interesting thing. Fail to ban is actually part of the system now. It didn't used to be. I used to have to put that in manually. That's part of uh, protecting your system against people trying to hack to get in there. Um, it adds them to a, like a ban list once it detects that they're trying to do your password login, etc., etc. So we're now going to log in. The username is root. Enter, and the password is Visidial. V-I-C-I-D-I-A-L. Enter. And we're in the system. I apologize for the screen quality because I'm using it through a phone, like I said. Once we move over to Putty, uh, it'll get a bit easier. Uh, so I'll do IF config because I want to see what the settings are on this. Oh, config. So what have we got? Uh, Etho. Where's our... It's obviously not got through. So I'm going to have to set up the IP for this machine so it can get through my router. Well, get to my router, should I say. Um... Uh, I just had a thought. It's silly me. Um, it doesn't need to do that. What I need to do is drag a cable across. There's, see, I'm jumping the gun a little bit because this is actually set up for Wi-Fi, um, but this won't run my Wi-Fi. <laughs> Let me grab my um, Cat5 and plug it in, and we should have a bit more activity. There we go. See, the Cat5's gone in, and suddenly it's gone, hey, what's that? You just plugged something into me. And so we're having a think now. See, it's picked up the IP address. I do not want 192.168.11 though, because that's my router. I need to change that. This is where a guy asked me the other day he was having problems because this won't work. Um, because that that address is normally a router address, and as such you get a conflict of IPs, but let's see, let's press enter. Has anything happened? Yeah, so we still have to change the IP anyway. But I, I normally round this up to something like 30 or 50, uh, something that's easy to remember. So your IP range wants to stay the same, like uh, 192.168.1, and then whether the dot is dot .50, dot .30, dot .100. Um, the reason I pick a higher number is your terminals your uh, call center agents are normally using uh from what i normally have here is two three four five so it'll be terminal two terminal three four five because then i can identify easily looking on here which computer is attached to that ip address so if you've got excess traffic or something you can see which computer is creating the problem because you keep them all in order so we'll do that change with a yast lan command. I want to change that from one. It's having a thing, it's gone away and I will look at different settings. Okay, so it knows that's my, this is my network card. And PCI Express controller. And as I said, usual, it's the tab to change everything. Oh, I want the U. Hang on. Hang on, back down. Edit. So it's down here. Press edit. 
just check is there I have a cross this is so difficult with only one hand there we go so type ethernet I want it on dynamic. I want it on statically assigned IP, which is that one. And the IP address, like I said, I want to give it a nice, easy one. 192.168.1. And let's call it 50. Subnet mask, normally always the same, is 255, 255, 255, this is the name of this server, VCBox7. You can actually change that, but every server has to have a name. Um, if you're doing clusters, it gets a bit more complex, but if you're doing this video, there's no way you're doing clusters this week. <laughs> um, now, I, I think this is correct off the top of my head. The easiest way to check is go onto your other PC and just go to the network settings on that, um, your... Uh, LAN connection, and it'll actually have this already in there, or should do. But I think it's correct, 255.255. So go down the bottom here. Then we just do next. I should save it. Now you see we've got our IP address here. We just press OK. And it's now saving our information. I apologize it's a bit, what do you call it, homemade, but it's uh, difficult to do this without actually having a computer that can record the screen, and I can't do that because the software you're using is actually an install. But once we get through the initial setup, like I said, everything can be done on putty. Um, which will make this a much, much easier thing to do. Um, I think I'll be putting a lot of these training videos on this stuff onto bpo24hour.com for those that are interested. Okay, it's doing something. All right, it's still not ready, 77%. It's still working away there. Has it finished is a question. Press enter. Yeah. So if I do an IF config, we should see our new IP address. 192.168.150. Right. Now we'll do a reboot. If I remember right, the command for this is actually reboot. There we go. And we just reboot the system to make sure that the changes we've just made are now saved. We've got some more work to do relating to the external IP, which is basically your router to allow dialing out. But I just want to get the system accessible from my other PC first. And one of the problems I do have on this laptop is it's now trying to boot from Windows again uh, because I'm using two partitions, but you won't have this bug. <laughs> 